Hello and welcome to A Layman's Guide to Minor VCR Repair, Volume 1. This instructional tape is your first step in learning to repair the many common problems that VCRs experience. Obviously, we won't be able to show you all of the models and all of the problems, but we will cover what are by far the most common, belts and idlers, which are sometimes called real units. These two items will cause a VCR not to rewind or fast forward, not to play or record, and they are usually the reason why a VCR will eat a tape. We'll also cover lubrication, and once again, we won't be able to cover all points on all models, but we will show you the most critical. After lubrication, we'll have a brief look at sensor lamps. Please keep in mind that this set is not designed to be a replacement for the manufacturer's recommended service procedures. Always be sure to consult with the manufacturer of the equipment if you are ever in doubt about any procedure. For those interested, this cassette is also available in Spanish. Let's now go ahead and have a look at the tools we'll need. First, some regular Phillips head screwdrivers, size number two and number one. A small jeweler's type screwdriver. Some hemostats or locking forceps. Some long neck cotton swabs some lightweight machine oil, and some hydrocarbon type grease. These are common items available from Electronics Inc. or your local distributor. Okay, let's have a look at some close-up views of some idlers or reel assemblies. This is the Panasonic Quasar type. It's also found on many other models of VCRs. Next, we have a sharp type idler assembly. This is another sharp idler. It's also found on many Emerson models. This is an RCA or Hitachi type idler. This is a Fisher Idler assembly. Here is another sharp type idler, also found commonly in Emerson. We have not shown this idler in the tape. It's here for your reference only. And last, we have a Toshiba-type idler. Once again, this is not displayed in the film. OK, let's first have a look at an idler and what it actually does. This is the idler that's spinning freely in the middle. It moves from left or to right, depending on the mode that the VCR is in. It acts as a clutch to turn these two reels. One is the supply on the left, the take-ups on the right. Now this VCR has been put into play mode, and you'll notice that the idler has moved to the right. It's turning the take-up reel. As the tape comes off the capstan, it's brought into the cartridge by the take-up reel. This is rewind. The idlers move to the left. This is fast forward. The idlers move to the right. Notice when the idler comes off, the reel stops moving. This is the capstan up here. Capstan pulls the tape through at a constant speed. Let's go ahead and do a demonstration here. Let's have a look at a normally operating idler. The unit's now going into play mode. Tape's going through the tape path and coming into the take-up reel. Everything's working fine. Now we're going to show another demonstration. We're going to put in a bad reel or idler unit. We'll show you how to replace this later.
This is a worn out idler. Let's go ahead and put it back into play mode. And you'll notice the bad idler will not turn the take up reel. If we apply a little bit of pressure to it, you'll see that it will, but it's worn out to the point where it doesn't operate properly. And we'll go back into stop mode. Notice rewind does not work either. Let's put the same tape back in and see what happens. Let's go ahead and go into play mode. And you'll notice the tape is spilling out of the cartridge. The VCR has an automatic shutdown feature which won't allow it to eat too much tape. And that's what a bad idler will do to a tape. Definitely needs replaced. Now let's go ahead and see how to replace these. Okay, the first unit we're going to have a look at is the Panasonic Quasar Technica type. They also manufacture VCRs for other companies. First thing we want to do is lift the machine up and remove the bottom cover. You'll notice seven screws attaching it. Always as a safety precaution, make sure that the VCR is unplugged. Once we get inside this unit, you're going to find that PC boards are exposed. Make sure that you don't touch anything that's not shown in the film. Okay, we've taken out the six screws. There's one screw left, and we'll get to that in a minute. This is the capstan belt that we're going to replace. This is the loading belt. Go ahead and remove the last screw, which has a red head on it. And now we're going to flip it down and remove the top cover. We'll come back to the belts in a moment. Turn the unit around. There's two screws remaining that secure the top cover. One screw's here and one on the other side. Once again, make sure your unit is unplugged. Okay, now let's flip it around. The cover attaches on the front also, so slide it backwards, then lift it up from the rear. Okay, now we have an overhead top view of the Panasonic Quasar model. First thing we need to do is remove the cassette housing. It's secured with four screws and one electrical connector. Do not remove any other screws other than the ones we show you. The electrical connector simply pulls up and comes out. Pull the cassette housing straight out. That will expose your idler. which is located right in the middle of the two reels. There's a C-ring that holds on the idler and a spring that must be moved towards the rear. Take your locking forceps and move the spring back two notches. Next, remove the C-ring. Now we'll pull the idler straight up, moving the spring out of the way. Before we put in the new idler, let's clean the wheel towards the base of the idler, which is located here. You can just use regular head cleaning fluid for this. 
make sure all the grease and any other residue comes off. Now let's go ahead and reinstall a new reel unit. Pull the spring back, drop it down. Check for free play on the idler. Let's go ahead and put back on the C retaining ring. And make sure it locks securely into place. Don't forget to move your spring back. And your idler is now replaced. Next, we're going to lubricate the capstan. Capstan's located here. Lubricate it at the base of the capstan shaft. Do not get oil on the upper part of it. If you do, make sure that you clean it off with some cleaner. Next, we want to put some grease on the tape guides, one on each side of the head. We now have a bottom view. Two belts must be replaced, one here, one here. First, an arm must be removed. This arm is called the flywheel bracket. Two screws hold it into place. Once those are out, remove it. Now go ahead and remove the reel belt. Clean your tape guides with a cotton swab removing all grease and dirt. When they're clean, go ahead and replace it with a new belt. After this belt is replaced, replace the belt on the left, which is called the loading belt. Unlike the other one, do not move the white large pulley. Okay, now we're looking at a Sharp or Emerson, sometimes TMK model. This is a top loader. First need to remove the two screws that hold on the top cover. And the two on the rear have already been removed. Let's go ahead and lift the unit up. We've removed the bottom cover. And you'll notice that the belts on this unit are covered by a PC board. These screws need to be removed. This PC board is on a hinge, and the hinge is on the lower part. Once again, the screws usually have red heads. Now very, very easily lower the PC board. And now you'll see the belts are exposed on the bottom. Loading belt. and that is your real drive motor. Now we have a close-up view of the bottom. Once again, we have a bracket covering the pulley assembly. It's called the flywheel bracket. That needs to be removed. And now we can easily get to the belt. Let's go ahead and clean all areas that the belt is exposed to. And let's put another one on. After it's back on, go ahead and test it for free play again. And go ahead and replace the flywheel bracket.
Next belt is called the loading motor belt. Be very careful not to move the white pulley. It's okay to move the motor, but you'll notice here that he's holding the pulley steady and cleaning around it and not moving it. If you were happen to move that and get it out of place, you could cause problems with loading on the VCR. So be very careful that you keep it still during belt replacement. And that takes care of the belts. Let's now go ahead and replace the idler assembly. There's a total of four screws and one spring. Here's the idler, first screw and the second screw. There's the spring. Remove the screws first. And the plastic arm. Now remove the spring. You'll notice that two more screws are now exposed. Remove them. And at the same time, make sure that the motor on the underneath side is supported. You'll notice it's free now. Take the idler out. Lubrication points are here and around the outsides. Clean this. Remount your new idler. Holding the real motor into place, remount it. Make sure that the screw holes align properly. Now go ahead and remount the spring. And finally the white bracket with two screws. Now check the idler to make sure that it moves freely. Replace the counter belt, lubricate the capstan, and the tape guides. And that'll finish it up. Let's have a look at a popular Sharp model. We're going to replace the belts, the reel or idler unit, and show you the appropriate lubrication points. We now have a bottom view. First, we have to remove the flywheel bracket. Two screws hold it on. Next, remove the belt in between the capstan and the lower part of the real unit. Clean your belt guides. We're now going to flip the unit over. And we're going to have to remove the cassette housing on this particular model. Two screws hold this one in. One here, one here and there's also an electrical connector that must be removed.
After you have the screws out, remove the electrical connector. Now very gently lift the cassette housing out. There are two screws that hold the real unit in place. Remove both of these. and gently lift the idler out. You'll see now why we had to remove the belt first. Now get a new idler assembly and replace it in the same fashion as you took it out. Make sure that it sits neatly into place. After you're through, make sure it moves freely. Lubrication points are here, here, your capstan, and your tape guides. Next, we'll replace the loading belt, which is hiding down the bottom corner of the right-hand part of the screen. and put the new one into place. Turn the unit over, replace the belt and the flywheel bracket. Let's now have a look at the RCA Hitachi type. We'll replace the belts and the idler. First, remove the top cover. Next, there are three screws which hold on the faceplate. One, two, three. Remove these. Then, remove your faceplate. We now have an overhead view. You'll notice this model has a shield over the heads. Remove these two screws. And then pull the shield up, being very careful not to come in contact with the video heads. This is the idler and the counter belt. Let's first remove the idler. There's a small clip towards the rear. Pull it back and lift the idler straight up. Clean this area. Apply a small amount of lubricant to this area. Replace the idler the same way you took it out. Check it for free play. Now replace the counter belt. and check it for free play. Lubricate your capstan and tape guides. We now have a bottom view of the RCA Hitachi type. You'll notice this model has a PC board, which must be moved. First, remove the cable restraint on the right.
Make sure all the cables are free and clear. This model has three screws that hold the board into place. Remove these. There are also two small clips which must be pulled out, one here and one here. Slowly lower the PC board. The belts are now exposed. Loading belts, reel belt, capstan belt. Remove the flywheel bracket. There's one small screw holding on the loading motor. Remove it. You'll notice the motor now has some free play. Remove the reel belt and the capstan belt. Clean your belt guides. There's a small belt that can't be seen underneath this pulley. Remove the C-retaining ring. And slowly lift it out. Once again, clean your guides. and now replace the belt. Put it back into position and check for free play. Don't forget the split washer. Next we'll do the loading belts. First one and second. Clean the grease off this area. Loading belt back on. And remount the loading motor. Don't tighten the screw all the way yet. And go ahead and put on your last loading belt. Now tightly remount the loading motor. Replace the capstan belt. And the reel belt. Relubricate this area.
remount the flywheel bracket. And you're all done. The last unit we're going to cover is the Fisher type. We'll cover belt replacement and idler arm replacement. Lubricate this unit as you would normally. The top is off and we now have an overhead view. This is the idler. You'll notice this is a little bit different. The idler is on the underneath side. This is the brake, take up reel, and spring on the brake. Here's the spring on the idler, the brake once again, and the spring holding the brake into position. First, remove the spring on the brake. Pull the brake arm back. Next, we're going to remove the take-up reel. There's a C retaining clamp on top. Remove it. Pull the take-up reel straight up and set it aside. Next, we'll remove the spring on the idler arm. Go ahead and lubricate your unit. We've changed our view to the bottom. Here's the capstan belt, flywheel, gear assembly, loading belt, mode switch. Make sure that you don't touch the mode switch. Cable harness, and spring attached to the cover plate. First, we want to move the wiring harness out of our way. Make sure as you remove it, you do not pull or tug on the wires. There's one small screw holding on the cover plate. Remove it. Next, remove the capstan belt. And one last, the spring holding onto the cover plate. The plate can now be removed, exposing the gear and the idler assemblies. This is the gear assembly. Below is the idler assembly. In order to get to the idler assembly, the gear assembly must be removed. Remove the C-retaining ring on top and pull it straight out. The idler is now exposed. To remove it, remove the C-retaining ring on the left Make sure the idler is off to the left in the slot and pull it straight out. Now replace the old idler with a new one. Slide it back in in the same fashion as you took it out. Make sure that it locks into the groove. Notice the notch cut out. And replace the gear assembly. Split washer. 
and the split washer on the idler arm. Check it for free play. Replace the loading belt. Now the cover plate can go back on. Make sure it fits back into the position exactly as it came out. Clean your guides. Don't forget the small spring that was attached to the cover plate. It's very important that these wires go back into the exact position that they were. A loose wire could accidentally catch into one of the gear assemblies. Now go back and check. We can now replace the capstan belt. Let's go ahead and have a look at some sensor lamps. These are the four most common types found in most VCRs. The one on the right is called a JVC type. The one on the left is a weak grain. It's available in either 6 or 12 volts. This is a base mount. It's 6 volts. This is a flange mount. It's also 6 volts. Okay, we're going to show you a couple examples of infrared type sensor lamps. These are found on the newer models. They do not emit any visible light, and they usually have a small dome type cover over the bulb. These sensors rarely go bad. Notice the way they look. Okay, let's have a quick look at replacement of a typical sensor lamp. This is a flange type. First, remove the screw that's holding the PC board down that the light is attached to. And remove the bulb assembly. When you flip it over on the other side, you'll see the two leads coming to the board. You'll want to measure the voltage coming to these two. Measure one here and one on the other side. You'll see the two points where the bulb is soldered in. One point's here and one here. It's also held into place by two plastic tabs which will need to be removed there and one under the wire right there. Break these two tabs off desolder the bulb and replace it. And after you have replaced it, make sure that you mount it back securely and that it's in the proper place that it's supposed to be.